but I promise you, the chief function of a 501c3 corporation is the same as any and all corporations, to make money. I just asked you a minute ago, what is the chief function of a nonprofit corporation? And you answered correctly by saying, make money. But what is the fundamental purpose of a 501c3 corporation? And I'll just answer it for you. It's to achieve impact. That does distinguish us from the for-profit sector in some respects, in some ways. So, significant impact. Now, Dr. Robbins will say, if you want to run a food bank out of the man, back of your minivan, God bless you. It's okay, we need that. But if you want to achieve significant impact, you have to figure out ways to go to scale. Dr. Robinson wrote new guidelines for nonprofits to take organizations to heroic missions of scale that make such a difference, are so transformational, that money chases after them. Big bet philanthropy comes after them. And is your statement of mission and is your case for support so startling that it ruins a donor for you? Only if you're able to have a great dream backed by a sound plan that achieves significant impact. We're not charities, we're not nonprofits, we're not 501c3s, we are impact organizations. I think that's the sector that we need to transform ourselves into, repurpose, rebrand, reposition ourselves as impact organizations. Money drives impact, what do donors want? Oh, this is great, guys. We are all so wonderful talking about outputs. Our case for support documents tell about all the wonderful things we're going to do. That's outputs. But if you want to go from the five-figure gift to the six- and seven-figure gift, you've got to show donors outcomes. Listen, you're showing them your outputs. We've got this program and this program and this program, and it's romantically named, and it's got a one-paragraph description, <laughs> and we're going to do it for five years. But that's our output. And you can't have outcomes without output, and we're not going to apologize for communicating that. But if we are going to attract the big bet philanthropy, the large donor, give them the confidence to take the risk. Donors aren't risk-averse. They're begging to put their money somewhere that even has a little bit of risk on it. Some angel investing. Can you give them the gift of not only outputs, but outcomes? And you will prognosticate. You need to do it with integrity. You may or may not miss the mark. Any stock prospectus that I've ever received had all of these different things in it that talked about outcomes that were, could fluctuate. But Dr. Robinson really invited me to talk to you about outputs versus outcomes. Connie asked me this question. Jimmy, why is it like nails on a chalkboard when we tell nonprofits to put money first? And Lewis Fawcett replied, piety. Okay. Jack Horak, are you here, Jack? I want you to know that I didn't know Jack a year ago. Jack has created a very similar organization in the Northeast called Tango and is advancing the same narratives and drew the same conclusions completely independent of us. But I called Jack Horak when I read this. Charities ceremoniously hide behind mission as an excuse to neglect the harder work of acquiring the cash they need to achieve significant impact. And when I read that, I knew I wanted to be Jack Horak's friend. Jack is sponsoring this event. He's going to be speaking tomorrow on day two. Oh, this is piety, right? Isn't this great? Watch this. There are few sorrows in life, however poignant, in which a good income is of no avail. Guys, this is an easy one. The number one indicator of a nonprofit's ability to achieve impact is its capacity to add staff. And if you're not adding staff, you're not achieving impact. It's a simple matter of the order of things.